Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 5 November 2018. Coming to you with a From the Sharpening Bench video on this knife from Will Moon Knives. This is his latest custom offering. It is called the Banshee and it is pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Um, I have known Will for gosh, I don't know, four or five years. We came into contact like most of us in the far-flung knife community via social media. I think I, I believe I met Will via telephone as I was doing some work on one of his knives for a customer and just needed some guidance in disassembly and reassembly. And we've shared some customers over the years and, and uh, I've tried to, uh, tried to help him a little bit with some uh, with some design features, you know, giving him my two cents, which is worthless to most people. And Will has been pretty receptive to my input. Um, of course, we've shared some customers, good ones and not so good ones. Um, <laughs> there's a lot more to that story, which brings me to uh, one point I want to make before I even get into talking about this knife. Like many people who are uh, providers of products and services in a small and sometimes rather inbred community, the knife community I speak of. Um, sometimes things don't go on social media like we would want and uh, I don't know, let's just say forum think tends to take over in a negative way. And some people who find themselves on the wrong end of that stuff have a pretty hard way to go and Will has been one of those people. So, ground rules in the comments section of this video. Um, you are welcome to comment good and bad about the knife that you see in this video. The, this comment thread will not be a forum for a, <laughs> a referendum on the character or personality or business acumen of a custom knife maker. Ain't gonna happen. Um, I think I'm I think I need to do a video specifically about that not specifically about will but about custom knife makers and their customers because I think there are some things that need to be said anyway I digress but I think we needed to get that out of the way in the beginning so here is the Manchi as I said it is a uh, it is a custom knife lightweight tactical variety and it's pretty nifty before we start talking about the knife, here's the packaging that you're going to receive if you order a Banshee or maybe other Will Moon knives in current times. It is a very nice sort of a, I don't think it's a micro suede, but it's sort of a, a velour kind of material with a zip top. Nice lining. Inside with the knife you're going to get a Will Moon Custom Knives sticker proudly made in the USA, Apex, North Carolina. Actually, I have two of these. Uh -huh. One's going to stay in the pouch. One's probably going to go in the back window of my truck with my other knife stickers. Okay, so this is a 2018 release by Will, and I got a fingerprint on that gorgeous blade already. Got to get rid of that. This knife been in, in uh, development for I'm going to say most of the year by Will. It appearance wise is a relatively close cousin to his last release, the Storm Crow, which was a lightweight liner lock knife. This knife, if you are paying attention, you're going to notice employs a rather familiar looking locking mechanism. Yeah. It looks familiar, but it's not, okay? This is the Moon Spindle Lock in operation, very similar to a Benchmade Axis Lock with some pretty important differences that we'll get into as this video progresses. So it's a ball bearing pivot spindle lock. The standard blade steel for the Banshee series of CPM 20 CV, which is the steel mine is made in. I believe I've seen some 
some Instagram posts from Will in Damascus. So there might be some special steel options available to you. If you're having Will do a custom build of one of these for you. The blade shape on mine is the Bowie. The Bowie. A radical clip point. A radical clip point with a very pointy point. Interesting spine. Beautifully satin finished and chamfered along the straight run of spine. And then the clip has a beautiful crowned spine. It is a deeply hollow ground blade of 3 sixteenths stock. And you know, one thing about Will, he is adventurous when it comes to blade design. Most clip point knives are going to have a uh, a plunge line or a line of demarcation between flat and hollow grind that's going to be fairly parallel to the spine, not so on the Banshee. It's a bit of a stylized clip point. Makes an interesting curve profile. Lots of visual tension between handle and blade. So we've got sort of a humpback handle and then this line of the knife runs right down the spine so we've got some curvature, then some straight, and then some upswept. It's almost an S-curve to the eye in some perspectives. Very interesting. When it's in your hand, the point of that blade is presented in exactly the right spot. Beautifully done. Blade length on this 3 and 5 eighths inches. Of course, I said thickness, 3 sixteenths. The handle on the backing up that three and five eighths inch blade is five and an eighth so a little bit better efficiency blade to handle than some of the mark series of knives from will okay and, you know before i get into the the handle and the mechanism i just gotta say in a world where custom knife makers th just are absolutely frame lock myopic like they can't make a custom knife unless it has a frame lock. It is so refreshing to see a maker who will experiment with lightweight but strong liner locks and even with an improved design on a brilliant locking mechanism, the Benchmade Access Lock, now the Moon Spindle Lock. So bravo Will for stretching your engineering muscles and coming up with something new different, effective, and oh so much fun. Good job. Okay, so the handle. Does that look familiar to you guys? Does it look familiar at all? Does it, does it bring to mind any designers that you've seen over the years? Does it pay homage to anyone you think? Well, I kind of think it does. I think the first Instagram I saw, Instagram post of this knife I saw, I immediately messaged Will and I said, way to go, my friend. Just a couple years after the passing of Warren Osborne, you have paid homage. There's the, uh, the Moon Banshee next to the vaunted, most famous Warren Osborne design, the 940. And if you didn't see much resemblance there check this. Here it is next to the Osborne Proxy by Benchmade. Absolutely. When we look at the overall shape of the handle and then how its thickness is relieved uh, from sort of the lateral line on out to the edges, very Osborne-esque. And Will and I were talking about that as I had received this knife and we were just kind of batting it back and forth a little bit. You know, is it, uh, is it copying a design when you do something like this that looks something like that? Or is it homage? You know, and I, he said, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people will want to cry foul and say, oh, you copied Warren Osborne. And I said, you know, how many fixed blade knives in this world in the last 40 years have been made to resemble a Bo Randall fixed blade? A Bob Loveless handle and, and knife. How about a Bill Moran 
handle and knife. Lots of them. You know, it's totally proper and respectful in the knife world for a next generation of makers to get inspiration from and pay homage to legends who came before them. So if this looks like an Osborne handle, Will's willing to embrace that, and I'm willing to give him a round of applause for it. Absolutely. And by the way, as, w as with Warren Osborne, Mr. Moon knows how to make a knife that fits the hand. Very cool. Okay, I bet you're all wondering, aren't you, what on earth is that handle material? I guess I wanted to call it, uh, before I knew, you know, sort of a green and silver carbon fiber or maybe a glass fiber weave, which the latter of which would be more accurate. This is a product called Texalium, T-E-X-A-L-I-U-M, made by a company called Hexel Corp, H-E-X-C-E-L. And a lot of knife handles that you might have seen over the last few years that sort of look like they're, they might be carbon fiber but with some color are similar products to this. There may even be some Texalium out there on the market. Um, so it is a, it's a woven glass fiber product and then over the top if you look down this flat portion down the lateral line of the knife and up here near the front there's a very thin almost transparent aluminum coating that gives it durability. Pretty cool. Uh, strength and stiffness emulate carbon fiber. I'm going to squeeze here on the thinnest part of the knife and you tell me if you can see it deflect. That's all I got. You can barely, barely see it. So pretty strong. Stronger than G10 in that regard. Very cool stuff. And it just does wonderful things when you start milling it um, with chamfers and biases. Even the spine, very cool as you're looking at a cross section of the layers. Really neat stuff. The pocket clip on the Banshee is one piece of titanium flat stock, just nicely chamfered. One thing about Will's stuff, uh, details do not escape him. And then that clip is dead straight and it's mounted on a Will calls it a jelly bean of Texalium. So without bending this clip, you are going to get adjustability. So uh, Will sends them, I don't know if you can see this, but just a little bit off the handle. So if I had to guess the gap, it's about a 32nd of an inch off the surface of the handle. So he obviously ships them um, sort of as loose as you could possibly want and then that thickness of the jelly bean can be modified for the desired level of retention that you desire so pretty easy process you could certainly take that apart and do it yourself if you kind of know what you're doing using a very flat substrate and some sandpaper you could send it to will and tell him where you'd like it i will probably set this one up so it just touches with a slight amount of tension I find that in a pair of blue jeans uh, that are new, that have an intact top seam, uh, the retention is adequate, but it still likes the, that seam does like to move um, back and forth in the area behind the ball, okay? Um, but requires some effort to get in and out over that seam. If you have a pair of knife guy jeans, with a frayed edge and no top seam, it's going to fit pretty doggone loose in the pocket, just so you know, as shipped. Okay, you're going to wonder, aren't you, what is that ball in the end of the clip? Well, it is a ceramic, but it's not like a shiny gray ceramic like we see, or shiny blue. Um, of course, this clip inspired and authorized by Todd Bag Knives. Okay, uh, what's the material? Well, if you've had any dental work done in the last few years, and you wanted a crown or a bridge that matches the rest of your teeth, this is what they used. This is zirconia ceramic in gleaming white. Okay. All the hardware on this knife is titanium anodized green to match the theme of the knife. T8 are your body screw and clip fastener driver sizes. And then 
T15, both for the moon spindle lock and the pivot. Okay, um, no Loctite on these fasteners from the maker, so if you have a T10 and you're careful, it'll work. I've tried it. The thumb stud is also green anodized titanium. Mine's taken on a bit of a blue hue just from fingers, okay? And that thumb stud is not pressed and it's pretty tall, okay? Um, so in order to avoid banging into the thumb stud as you're sharpening, I suggest removing it. And mine is, it's basically just two identical studs with threaded holes and threaded rod holding them together. Um, really good thread fit. You finger tighten them, they stay tight, and you can you know, just bear down on it with your fingers to, to unscrew the thumb stud. Don't need to use any finish marring tools in my experience. So all the hardware is all green except, let me zoom in a little here, except for the ends of the spindle lock. They are green anodized, and then they're relieved, and the top dome is satin finished, which is very good because it sort of matches the texture and color pattern of the handle material in this case and you're not going to wear the anodizing off as you use it because the areas that you're touching are already bright satin. Pretty cool. Nice job Will. So let's talk a little bit about this mechanism shall we? What makes the moon spindle lock different than a Benchmade axis lock? I'm going to come back out just a little. First of all, you're sort of looking at one thing. There are no Omega springs in this mechanism. You have a piston on each side. And that piston is wrapped with a coil spring on each side. So, much like the Benchmade Anthem, we're using coil spring instead of Omega spring, which should make for longer life, better dur durability. And we're using two of them. So we got a little redundancy and more strength. I will tell you this, um, you'll not actuate this knife effectively using one thumb only, like you can on an axis lock. Uh, because of the double-sided nature of the moon spindle lock, uh, when you move one side, this spring over here is not being, uh, being compressed. You're gonna need thumb and forefinger, much like the caged ball bearing lock on the Spider Manix 2, okay? But, you know, once you're sort of used to doing that, in your mind, just think I'm carrying a Manix 2, not a 940. Everything is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. No big deal at all. Another difference from the Benchmade, as has been well documented on this channel, the closed stop pin on a Benchmade axis lock knife is the axis bar itself, which stops the knife on this choil surface, which on most bench made knives needs to be modified in order to sharpen. Um, so you gotta be real careful. So that's what stops the knife from hitting the backspacer. Now on the Banshee, Will has installed right here a closed stop pin um, to avoid the knife having to stop on this moving target and create potential premature wear on that spindle. Okay. Um, as, as I get a little deeper into this, I'll explain why I understand that it's, I understand the desired effect and what it is there to prevent, um, but it's, it causes some problems of its own that I'll get into. Um, okay. By the way, kind of a thick knife, about 710 thousandths at the front of the handle, 550-ish uh, at the back. So it's over an eighth of an inch more narrow at the back than it is at the front, which is standard wheel moon design, by the way. Gives you a lot to hang on to up front, but not so much at the top of your pocket, which is a good thing. And it's sort of how your hand works, isn't it? Yeah. Not bad at all, not bad at all. Obviously the fun factor with this knife Totally off the charts. It flings open and closed. Maybe better and with more authority than any bench, bench made axis lock. Um, 
I'm not going to call this a detent. I'm going to call it a cam tang and a spring. Definitely has more retention and more snapshot authority than an access lock. Check that again. Okay. Compare that to this. Okay. Um, kind of neat. Gives you a little bit of an air of robustness and quality. Like it a lot. Mm -hmm. What about construction? Well, we have a pivot and we have one, two, three body screws and they are engineered like I would like it uh, for precise location. So there are a male, there's a male screw on each side of each uh, body screw location. Running down the middle um, is a precisely machined barrel that each screw threads into and those barrels positively locate the knife this way and this way. So every time it goes together, it goes together in exactly the same orientation. Bravo, Mr. Moon. Let's look at the blade centering on this one. It is dead right on the money, honey. Uh -huh. How about lockup? Well, I have absolutely zero vertical play, absolutely zero horizontal play. With a free swinging action, you can't get action like that on your frame lock flipper, my friends. Because you got a lock bar pressing against it all the time. Look at that. Silent, smooth, beautiful. <laughs> Before I move back to the blade, I'm going to give you a couple, uh, a couple cautions on the handle. If you look in the, in the saber grip, where my index finger locates that handle, it's a little hot right here and right here. Um, got a nice big... A nice big chamfer that comes from this uh, sort of body line of big milled chamfer that carries right into the finger groove but it terminates here so then you've got a little run of about a quarter inch and then another run of about three sixteenths right on the end of that finger groove that are pretty sharp and Will was kind of waiting for me to mention that after I had spent a little time with the knife um, if you look you got a chamfer here and a chamfer here. I don't know if there's a way to carry those through or I don't know, or just break that edge, maybe a sixteenth, just right here and right here would make it a lot more comfortable. Okay. And maybe the same on the inside of the frame. Pretty sharp on the inside of the frame. Not that that really should bother you it's just there okay so ergonomics let's take a look other than that one issue the saber grip is absolutely superb and it presents the blade in a beautiful attitude the hammer grip absolute money I can feel the clip but where it hits me is not a problem at all the draw cut grip again beautiful uh, I, I'm getting a lot of clip in my ring finger and pinky but again not in an uncomfortable way Okay. Overhand pinch is just great. You got lots of meat. Again, the blade is presented very nicely. I can contact if you know if I'm cutting on a substrate, I can contact here without the handle hitting. So I can, you know, kind of wedgy for a kitchen knife, but you can sure use it that way. Draw cut, uh, draw cut. And this this vertical draw cut grip is super comfortable. And then the last one we look at is the reverse grip, and it's money. Now, this is not a go-to-war knife, guys, by any means, but in all tactical grip applications, it is very solid. Very solid. And although it's light at only 4.1 ounces for an over 3.5 inch blade, it is very strong. does definitely inspire confidence. Had to do a wipe. Okay, now let's talk about the blade we've talked about talked already about its visual tension with the handle you can just see so many ways that handle and blade go together and by the way before I get too deeply into analyzing this one you're gonna to want to know this 
there are five other standard blade shapes available. Okay, there is a drop point, a tanto, a worn cliff, and a sheep's foot, as well as a kukri. And he is adding a dow and a recurved tanto very shortly. If you have something else in mind for blade shape, we'll, we'll be happy to talk to you about it. Now that sort of brings me back to why the closed stop pen. So many blade shapes, you know, depending on, uh, on the design and how things need to go together, uh, the blade may be slimmer or more broad. The cutting edge may want to orient differently with the inside of the spine of the handle. So having that closed stop pin in there makes you less dependent on where this choil surface lies so you can stop that thing from blade wrapping. So I'm assuming not only does it take some of the workload off that spindle bar, but it also helps him customize where a different shape blade is going to hit uh, when, that, when the blade is closed. So if you're wondering, where does, that, where does that closed stop pin contact my knife blade? Well, this sort of brings me to my one criticism of the blade. You see where my, you see where my edge bevel, which by the way is 20 degrees, see where it kind of flares at the base, will intentionally let his plunge terminate forward of this point so he could get some meat in here because it, just below where you see that little radius on the corner of my blade, just below there is where it contacts the stop pin. Um, and you guys, I even got some comments on my Instagram. Why does that edge bevel get so thick at the heel of the blade? You guys know I do not like it when this happens. And frankly, this is on the hairy edge of acceptable. That is sharpened at 20 degrees. The bevel width nearly doubles at the back, but not enough to look like ridiculously stupid, like it would on a lot of zero tolerances if you went all the way to the back. Um, you know, you could, and Will did when he sharpened this as new from the maker, you could increase your angle slightly as you get to the back. If you're freehanding, you would just rock the knife up a little as you got to the back. If you're using an Edge Pro, um, yeah, good luck with this on a, on a Wicked Edge. But you can actually, as you're coming to the base of the edge with your Edge Pro stone, you can roll the knife up off the table. I chose not to do that in this case. Because as I said, I thought that was, to my eye, still acceptable but barely in how the width of that bevel works. And I wanted you guys to be able to see exactly what you're dealing with. Somebody asked me uh, why I sharpen a brand new knife. Well, you guys remember, number one, I'm a user and I like the sharpness of my edges. I, I am a professional knife sharpener, for goodness sake. Um, and usually... Almost all the time, I do a better job than the maker. Second, I'm a knife reviewer, so I need to be able to tell you guys what you're going to run into when you sharpen a particular knife. Sometimes a knife a blade might look really, really cool, especially custom knife. Then you go to sharpen, and you're going, my goodness, did this guy grind his first knife last week? You know, it'll be thick in spots, thin in spots, and you get done and your edge looks horrible because of what the maker left you. So I always like to be able to sharpen a knife before I review it. So I, I, I can tell you accurately what you're going to deal with if you sharpen your own stuff. So here's what we got on the Banshee. Notice the thickness of the edge bevel stays pretty consistent after the first 3 16 of an inch at the base. And then it's going to just widen ever so slightly toward the tip, which is the maker trying to make a pointy tip but still with a little bit of strength, okay? And this is a really pointy tip, but still adequately strong. Um, why 20 degrees per side, Rob? You sharpen everything at 15, 16, or 17, don't you? Pretty much. And the reason is because it's 3 16th stock with a relatively low and relatively deep hollow grind, the shoulder is going to be in your way anyway. So there's not much point in going super skinny geometry on the cutting edge and it's not a particularly thin knife behind the edge didn't want the bevel to be overly broad okay especially back here 
but even at 20 degrees per side, does it cut? Let's take a look. Yeah, I, I just ran out of my last phone book paper, so I'm back to not just shooter supply catalog paper. Let's see. Will the Banshee cut? Apparently, if I do my part, the Banshee will cut. What's dude's name on Forged in Fire? Your knife will cut. Mr. Moon, your knife will cut. Okay, it will cut. Absolutely, it will cut. So, what would I, would I do? Would I make this knife like this, or would I consider this still in development with this closed stop pad and this plunge that doesn't quite get done? I did make a suggestion to Will. I have no idea if he's going to take it to heart and implement it. I will require no fee for this bit of engineering advice. What I would have done, because it almost begs you to come forward anyway, and you can do so safely, even with the, the choil like it is, what I would do is I would bring that choil forward. What is that? That's probably 3 16ths of an inch, less than a quarter. Radius this more gradually for the shape of your finger. And then I would move the stop pin back and down into the handle a little bit. And it shouldn't interfere with anything in doing so. that I can see, but I have not disassembled this knife yet. The other option would be um, to just go back to what we know works, right? For what, 20 years, Benchmade's been doing this lock mechanism, one of the strongest, most user-friendly mechanisms ever in the history of knives. And the access bar is your closed stop pin. This is an eighth inch stock. This is 3 16th stock. Look at the sizes of the bars. Your Benchmade Axis bar compared to your Moon Spindle lock bar. Uh, bigger blade stock, bigger Axis lock bar, more meat in every, in every area. I really can't see how the weight of that blade snapping closed on that spindle is ever going to hurt that spindle? I mean, when you think about it, you know, how many times is, is the knife going to be in a situation where it's got negative pressure on that lock bar? You know, even this Benchmade lock uh, on the Osborne, the 940 Osborne, has been tested to over 200 foot-pounds of negative pressure on the blade while open without failure. Everything's bigger in this knife. I can't imagine, I can't imagine that's going to be a problem. Will have may, will may have other reasons for doing that besides the strength issue, but you know knife makers have to have credible reasons to explain to their ignorant customers like me why they do things. Sometimes they keep secrets, and sometimes they tell all the truth. You just never quite know. But other than that, I pretty much leave this knife alone. And did I mention it's freaking cool to look at? Jeez, look at that thing. Look at that thing. It's a work of art. I think I've prattled on long enough. I'm going to carry this for a few more weeks and come back and do for you guys a, uh, maybe not a longer review, but I'm, I'll kind of address the things I've uh, said about it in this video make corrections as needed, and give you an inside look at the spindle lock mechanism. I have it on good authority from Will himself, but I'm not going to get myself in too much trouble taking it apart. Uh, easier than a Benchmade axis lock. I won't have springs flying everywhere, and I won't have to borrow a third hand and hold my mouth right. So I'll take you at your word, Will. And I'll talk to you guys soon about this knife. Thanks for watching. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word and my Will Moon Banshee are sharp.